Hello and welcome to a very, very cool moment. This was graciously sent in by Mike over at Swamp Fox. Mike reached out to me after I did my 1 to 10 review about how much he loved what I was doing. And he graciously offered me an optic. Ironically enough, the one he offered is the one that was most exciting to me. The 2 to 12. Kentucky Long. This is, of course, the first time I'm opening this up. <sighs> and I am painfully excited. I was very excited with their 1 to 10. I thought it was a better MPVO than an LPVO. What is an MPVO? A medium-powered variable optic. That sort of is self-explanatory. He also, I guess, wanted me to review another mount. This one, ooh, is extremely hollowed out and very, very lightweight. Significantly lighter than their other mount that I had reviewed, which I actually have right here. This hostile engagement mount, which I had already reviewed, was very heavy at 9.6 ounces. This new guy, just for comparison's sake, oof, four ounces lighter. That is much more like it. But I'm not here to review this, or at least do the unboxing. I'm here to look at the optic. Sorry, I got extremely ahead of myself. They even gave me this nice little Velcro patch, which will be put to good use. This is what I am painfully excited for, because I've been on a real kick lately for an MPVO. And uh, this thing so far clicks a lot of really interesting boxes. I do not know if this will fit on my rings on my Scout, but nevertheless, this could still be a very viable option for if you don't really need a 1X, and yet you want to go really far out. Packaging is a little to be desired. There's a little bit more that I would like to see as far as this optic not being pushed around. But at least Swamp Fox was nice enough to reach out to me and offer me more scopes. The only other manufacturer to do that is Arkin. And um, I'm greatly appreciated. I'm greatly appreciative for them at least reaching out. Let's pull out everything inside this box and see what we've got. Because there is actually a lot of stuff in here. I'm going to leave the extra battery and their stickers inside. I really like this reticle so far. Never have using it, not even looking at it in person. I just like how it's at least shaped. Even at 2x, if that's the normal size, those three posts at 3, 6, and 9 will be more than should be more than thick enough to pick up quickly. And at full magnification, well, that sort of speaks for itself. That center dot is going to be hopefully perfect, because that's what I like to see. Got a little tool bag. We have two different lengths, it looks like throw levers that we can obviously take off and put back on. So we have a low and a high. Phenomenal that they include that. We have our little torque tool. Actually, their scope caps, if I remember correctly, are very nice. Yeah. Primary arms usually include scope caps on a lot of their optics, but theirs feel like a really hard plastic. This is, feels a lot more soft and malleable. I'll be curious to see how well these fit on the tubes, but they do have a pretty decent feel to them. So we'll give that a shot in just a second. And I, I, I usually don't do this, but I figured let's all look at this for the first time together because I'm genuinely excited for this. Nice little warranty card, Patriot. This is everything you're going to need to know. Pretty standard stuff. That cap assembly and the rectory assembly already looks very similar to the Athlon BTR uh, Helos 2. Or is it Helos BTR Gen 2? Uh, yes, the Helos BTR Gen 2 with that really small threaded stud coming off that cap. But those so far seem to be really good. How to use your reticle. I recommend everybody goes through these and masters this, or at least understands the basics, because it's going to make you a much better shooter as a result. 
Sunshade is included, which is nice. This being a 44 millimeter tube, it's not that big, but again, this is not a very large magnification range. Two to 12 is only a 6X multiplier, and manufacturers have been making really high quality 6X magnified optics for quite some time. So I have no doubt that this thing is going to be at least acceptable. As far as the price, these are like around five, 550. And I'm sure you can get them on sale for a little bit less. Oh yes, a little bit of dirt on the bottom, but comes right off. Doesn't feel too heavy. 26.5 ounces is not the lightest by any means or stretch of the imagination, but it's not the heaviest either. Uh, I don't really have another, actually no, I lie, I do, but it is an older Gen 1. Of course, the venerable Gen 1 PST 2.5 to 10, it is a much smaller optic, but it really doesn't weigh that much less. Granted, I do have a set of worn rings on this. You know when things just don't work out? The rest of my video got corrupt. For whatever reason, whenever I'd go to encode it and render it, it would just crash. At the back, we have the Fast Focus eyepiece. Though I've been using this now for quite some time, it is still nice and tight. All the way back, quarter turn in, it is solid, rigid, fantastic. Takes a lot of effort to turn it, which is perfect because with the fast focus eyepiece, once you set it, you shouldn't really have to do much with it. And once you set it, if you are going to be using their caps, you slide it on. And well, you can see it's still going to turn. The skirt's not long enough, but these do go on really, really well. Both the front, well, the rear and the front work well enough and still better than what you get with primary arms. From there, we're gonna take a look at the magnification ring. As you can see, I already have one of the throw levers installed on here, and these throw levers are fantastic. There's a dovetail cut around the entire perimeter of the magnification ring, so you could slide this off, put it on wherever you want, lock it up, and you're perfect. We have from two at 12 o'clock to 12 just past six, so it's a little bit more than 180 degrees full rotation, but, it is nice, it is smooth, and it is perfectly damped. You do not need a throw lever to really move this. You have plenty of purchase on the splines, but the included throw levers are absolutely fantastic. Saves you about 30 bucks, depending on what MK machining lever you'd have to get for this thing. So Swamp Fox, very, very good on you. And it doesn't end there, because I'll, I'll get a little ahead of myself, on the parallax and both turrets, you find the exact same sort of splineage. So you get really, really excellent purchase on everything on this, which is something that I criticize a lot of manufacturers for doing. One thing, however, is with the illumination control, which you could see goes from zero to 11 with no offs in between, the cap for it is the same exact diameter and splines as the actual control itself. And from what I recently experienced with the Primary Arms Micro Prism 1X is if it's sometimes like that, you unscrew the battery compartment and it shuts itself off, which is great. And it will shut itself off in this regard because, as you can see, we have the standard six prongs on the cover and the three dipples with a green PCB board on the inside. This system works perfectly fine. You have a nice O-ring on the shoulder and when it goes together, it works. But because we do not have a coin slot here, you can't really grab onto the control and cinch this up all that much. So if you're constantly turning this in one direction, there is the likelihood that you're going to do that and open up the battery compartment. However, other than that, this control, as you could hear it, sounds and feels absolutely fantastic. Very sharp detent and it pops right into place. I've been using this for a couple of weeks now and using the hell out of it and everything is still so far as it was when I pulled it out of the box. Joy of joys, an MPVO with a 2 to 12 magnification ring and a side focus. This is what sets this apart from the Credo 2 to 10 because the Credo was great from 2x to 8x but beyond that at any distance it wasn't really that clear. Even though I did get that back from Trigicon recently and they did claim it had a parallax issue we have to see if the new one is any better. But right off the bat, a side focus is very nice to see. Most of your swing from 10 being its minimum 
to uh, infinity, clearly, is, uh, well, it's 270-ish degrees to get to 100 yards. So if you're using this inside 100 yards, you have a very finite amount of control to really get that perfect. Beyond that, from 100 to infinity, is a very short sweep. So if you're shooting in between those distances, you'd probably throw it somewhere in the middle, use whatever magnification you want on this thing, and you'll probably get a really clear image. Control on this is very, very smooth. But, again, it requires a good amount of power to turn this thing. Happily, again, however, we have this excellent splining on the outside to give us great purchase. Even if your hands are oily, wet, you know, you're wearing gloves, you're going to be able to turn this all day long with no problems. Moving on to the turrets, these are both locking, as you can clearly see, and we have 6 mils per rotation. A little bit odd that they chose 6. Their 1 to 10 arrowhead was 8 mils per rotation. Don't know why that is, but the locking on this is, uh, it's there. It doesn't really feel or sound that great. It feels like it comes out fairly easily, but you know what? At least it's got something. But let's give this a couple of turns. Sounds pretty good. You can see we have a lot of play back and forth. But it sounds and feels good. It, sound, it sounds better than it feels. I mean, there, there is a little bit of mushiness to it. But we can easily see that everything lines up. We have a little red line underneath the cap. And it's nice to see that on the, the cap, the stadia lines go all the way to the bottom. So you could line it up by eye very easily. Could be better, but could be far worse. Windage. Actually, sounds like it has a slightly better lock to it. Feels and sounds about the same. I am happy, at least, that they do have from zero ones in either direction for right or left. But that's about on par. It's about the same. This video is already very long. That's because I'm very excited because Mike over at Swamp Fox was nice enough to believe in me, to send me an optic for review. So I figured it's a little justified to at least put the time and effort to give this thing a justified unboxing. But again, this is just the unboxing. This is not the full review. But regardless to that, let's get behind this thing and give a sneak peek on how it looks. So what does your 500-ish dollars buy you? Well, so far, it gets you a lot of really cool features. And looking through this thing at 2x, you see a little bit more of the scope body than I would like, but this is an MPVO, not an LPVO, so you can't have everything. One thing it gives you, though, that most others don't is legitimate daytime bright illumination. I don't know what the hell they're running in this thing, but it is perhaps the best daytime bright illumination on any MPVO or HPVO, eh, HPVO I've ever gotten my hands on. It is just insanely bright. I've had high-end LPVOs that aren't even this bright. It's, it's, it's wild. As far as the reticle, I love the German posts at 3, 6, and 9 because it helps draw my eye to the center. If you're shooting at bigger targets in a fairly close distance, it's going to be really good to help figure out where the center is. As far as the rest of the reticle, I love the center dot. I like the drops. I think it's got a lot going on without being too busy. It doesn't seem to deter my eye. As far as the overall sharpness goes, this image at 30 yards is fantastic. And guess what? It doesn't end there. All the way out to 400 yards so far, this thing is just stellar. It It's a lot of optic for the money. Uh, I, I know it's it's held up pretty good because I've been shooting this thing for a couple weeks now. And it's it, it, it's been... Very, very, very good. Surprisingly good, in fact. But that's going to conclude this unboxing. The full review will be coming out very soon, so please stay tuned for that. I have to thank Mike again from Swamp Fox, because this video is made completely possible by him and Swamp Fox, so thank you very much for sending this in for review. And for all of you out there watching, thank you very much. See you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible.
If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can help by using the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.